you just look at this slide and take nothing else away from the rest of the day, you'll know everything you need to know about wounds that don't heal, more than your doctor, more than anybody you know right here. These are five reasons why wounds don't heal. The intrinsic things are nutrition, edema, which is vein disease, and circulation, or the delivery of oxygen. And then the extrinsic types of things like offloading and pressure and infection. Wounds don't heal if there's a deep-seated infection. Our bodies are very bright. What they do is they form a wall around a deep-seated infection and escort it outside so it doesn't go inside up and take our lives. Probably the most common intrinsic factor that's missed whenever you go to your doctor or a wound care center or anybody is this, this I know that they emphasize that here is nutrition. Nutrition, 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 and hydration. You do that, you're going to be healthy because your body knows what to do with it. And most doctors, including myself, really didn't get a good education about nutrition in medical school. I had to learn most of this on my own because I used to take care of a lot of HIV patients with AIDS and they would get malnourished from what's called cachexia because their metabolism would be churning to stay alive. And also in patients uh, who have large bed sores or any sore whatsoever, they get into problems with malnutrition even though they look great. You can't tell. But you simply have to ask a simple question. What was your weight six months ago? What is it today? If it's 10% less, you're malnourished. If it's 7.5% less after three months or 5% less after, three, after 30 days, then you're considered malnourished. That means you don't have enough protein stores to heal. It means you're going to have to start taking in more protein calories. So for those people who don't have necessarily the history of what my weight was, or you can't get that objective information somehow, there are lab tests that, that can be drawn. These are the lab tests, pre-albumin, transferrin, albumin, total lymphocyte count, and basic parameters can tell us if it's low. The pre-albumin is more of a snapshot of what's happening today. The transferrin is what was happening last week, and albumin is more like what was happening three, four weeks ago. But in general, if these uh, parameters are low, it means you don't have enough protein to heal your wounds. So the question is, how do we calculate how much protein somebody needs to heal a wound? And that's a very uh, simple question. Does it require uh, going to dietary school? We all have what's called a basal metabolic rate. That means the amount of energy we expend each 24 hours if we did nothing. So depending on whether you're trying to gain weight, as you would in my center, or lose weight in a weight loss center, this is what you work off of. There are equations that you can get off just Googling, what's my BMR? Or you can have a fancy test called an indirect calorimetry, which can tell you. But from that standpoint, then, you can start to add calories, protein calories, and calculate how, much, how many calories you need per day. And you add the number of cal calories based on um, what factors are involved. So if you have an ulcer or a sore, or you have an infection, you have to add, or you're active, you're, you're, a, you're an athlete, this is how many calories in addition to your BMR you need each day to remain healthy, so you're not at risk. Moderate activity, 50% of your BMR, add, you know, if it was uh, 1,500 calories, you'd add another 750. Very simple. And this is, uh, and, and if, for example, you are in one of our centers, you have these stress factors. So if somebody has an infection, add 40% of the calories to their basal metabolic rate. If they have infection plus a non-healing wound, it's another 50%. So in essence, our bodies need a lot more protein and calories when we're trying to heal. It's, that makes common sense, doesn't it?